I'm breaking my own rules. I know it hasn't been a year, man. Hasn't been a year since the 2020 NHL entry draft, but you know what? We're a season removed. So I think if we assume we're making this video from the standpoint of the beginning of the 2021 season and not specifically August 14th in the middle of the summer, one year later kind of works. So, if you've been sticking around for this channel for over a year, you know exactly what this series is right here. Let's talk about guys that were drafted in the 2020 NHL Entry Draft, their stories leading up to that draft, and where they have gone since then. We made the series last year for the 2019 guys at the end of the 2020 season, or at least during the off-season, or should I say the first off-season because the season got shut down. But we had made our videos talking about those guys in 2019. We're starting up two years later as well. We did Cole Caulfield as the first video in that series. But for one year later, 2021, let's go over talk about the number one player of the 2020 NHL entry draft. Today we're talking about Ramuski Oceanic to New York Rangers left wing player Alexi Lafreniere. Now, in order to talk about Lafreniere, we really have to go back to, honestly, I'm going to say 2018. Back in 2018, we had ourselves the entire argument starting up as to who would be first overall in 2020. For 2019, it was kind of obvious Jack Hughes was going to go first overall, and then you had other guys like Byram and Kako in there, but we all kind of knew 2019 was Hughes' draft to lose. In 2020, though, things were a little bit less clear. Not only because you had Lafreniere and the hype that he brought alongside of his name, but you had other guys too making big names for themselves. You had Quinton Byfield heading into the OHL following the same training regiment, agency, and overall just path that Connor McDavid did. You had guys like Tim Stutzla in Germany who, to be fair, a lot of people in this time frame did not really project to being even a top 10 pick. However, as the years went on, Alexi Lafreniere proved to everybody just why this player was so special. He made his debut in the QMJHL in 2017-2018, getting 80 points in 60 games played. He was one of the top rookies in the entire league, and he made the first All-Star team. He did this as a double underage player, pretty much matching what Philip Zadina was able to do, and mind you, Philip Zadina was drafted that year in 2018, sixth overall by Detroit. So you had Lafreniere, a guy who was going to be drafted two years later, doing the same things as Philip Zadina in the same league at the exact same time, and his numbers were comparable to a top six pick two years before his own draft season. So the hype for Lafreniere was really starting up in 2018 from my own perspective here. As things went on in Ramuski, he started to improve. 105 points in 61 games in 2018-19. By the way, still an underage player for the draft. He had 23 points in 13 games in the playoffs as well. Then in 2019-20, this is kind of where things started to come alive for Lafreniere. He had 112 points in 52 games played in the queue, so he was at two points a game. He led the entire QMJHL in points, although I will say he was not first in the CHL. That honor belonged to Marco Rossi of the OHL, the Ottawa 67 system over there. So it was a pretty tight race, but even though Marco Rossi outproduced Lafreniere in their draft years, Lafreniere was bigger, Lafreniere was seen as a more polished, overall projectable game, and Lafreniere also made himself a really good profile internationally as a member of Team Canada at the World Juniors. Now, World Juniors play is U20, so the fact that Lafreniere was suiting up for this team as a recently turned 18-year-old player was a pretty big deal in itself. However, the fact that Lafreniere went out there and he had 10 points in 5 games was even more noteworthy, because the guys who dominate this tournament, they're always the top of the line, just before 20-year-old guys. You never see guys who are draft eligible go over here and do as well as Lafreniere did. As a result, Alexi Lafreniere made the all-star team at the World Juniors. He was the best forward on the team. He was the MVP, and he was a top three player on his own team. It's not surprising because he had the most points per game out of everybody in the tournament, but Lafreniere was still so gosh darn good, even though he hadn't even been drafted yet. 
And so the Rangers took him first overall in a weird, strange little draft lottery that we had where we had the play-in series loser picks taking up a huge chunk of the voting odds. And statistically, we were a lot more likely to see one of these picks win than we were to see any other of these individual teams aside from, of course, the worst team in the league, Detroit Red Wings. So, a play-in series loser ended up winning the first overall pick, we had the play-in rounds complete, we had ourselves the selection of eight play-in series losers all fighting for Lafreniere with equal chances, and a lot of people were freaking out because, oh my goodness, Toronto, oh my goodness, Edmonton, and Pittsburgh, they're all involved in the second draft lottery with equal odds of winning Lafreniere, but eventually it's New York that gets it done. The Rangers selected Lafreniere first overall, and as a 6'1", 192 left-wing player, he was pretty much ready for the league already. Mostly because in the QMJHL, not only was he able to produce so many points, but he did it in a manner that just showed off that he was a man playing amongst boys. He had a really big beard already, too, which added to that fact. In the QMJHL, he was a player that just knew how to do hockey right. He knew how to use his physicality and big frame to shield the puck on the way to the net. He knew how to play make and set up guys in front because he just knew where guys needed to be and he got the puck to those dangerous areas. He could shoot, he could score, he could do all this stuff. He was fantastic. I kind of saw Lafreniere as a Jamie Benn kind of player, but better. And no, I don't want to see anybody disrespecting Jamie Benn in the comments. The guy was an Art Ross winner for crying out loud. But Lafreniere was playing a man's game, which is why he made the NHL right away. And his season was really weird to start things off. The Rangers lost five of their first six games, and Lafreniere had zero points in the process. His first goal came in that overtime win against the Buffalo Sabres, but then Lafreniere went pointless for another eight games. Lafreniere kicked off his season with two goals and zero assists in 19 games. Now, a lot of that has to do with opportunity. Okay, the lethal scoring touch, the anticipation, the eagerness to get into the play, a lot of that was gone with Lafreniere from Ramuski in the first few games he had with New York. Also, he was playing with bad line mates. A lot of people will point their fingers and say that David Quinn, the head coach, played these guys in a really limiting kind of role, which is why the lethality of an Alexi Lafreniere that was so rich and polished last year was seemingly gone this year. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Lafreniere. Even though at the time he was producing some of the worst numbers a first overall pick has ever produced in their rookie season, Alexi Lafreniere started to find his game a little bit more. As the year went on, he played with better players, he started playing with Sabanajad, a lot better of an option over there than playing with Phil DiGiuseppe, by the way. And eventually, after everything was said and done, Alexi Lafreniere wrapped up his 2020-2021 with 21 points in 56 games played. Now, if we look at the chart over here, you can see that he had a better rookie season than Jack Hughes, but he still had a particularly worse rookie year in terms of points, points per game, than a lot of the forwards who had been drafted before. Now, I do think that we're kind of heading into a period where first overall picks don't really produce as much as Matthews or McDavid did right out the gate, but Alexi Lafreniere is a guy who, as the year went on, got better and better. And now, with a guy like Gerard Gallant at the head of the bench, you have yourselves a coach who knows how to get the best out of his guys, even when you're not really expecting it. Gerard Gallant's a guy that was really able to bring out the best out of the Golden Knights when they started out. Same with Team Canada. When that team was losing, they were really down in the dumps there. All of a sudden, a few new players get added. For example, Manji Apani, fantastic ad right there. And Gerard Gallant goes out there, uses the team to the best of their ability. Boom, they win all the games. So, Gerard Gallant's a guy that I trust. And Rangers fans have been really excited for a good reason. So, for Alexi Lafreniere next season, I really would believe that a guy like Gerard Gallant, who knows what it takes to bring the best out of players, will go out there and hopefully bring the best out of Alexi Lafreniere. Now, the last lineup that we have here on Daily Faceoff going over the New York Rangers says that Alexi Lafreniere was playing with Mika Zibanejad and Capo Caco. So, if they're able to keep that line together for the first line next season, I think things could be really great because I really do believe that the Alexi Lafreniere that we saw all those years ago in Ramuski, not all those years ago, just a year ago, in fact, the confident, skilled, tacky playmaker sniper who played with an edge and who was not afraid to go out there and just put the puck in the back of the net, 
I think that guy still exists, and we didn't see that for a good chunk of the Rangers season this year, which is why Lafreniere produced at a rate that was barely just over Jack Hughes, and Jack Hughes, as we noted, had the worst rookie season in terms of points, points per game, and points per 60 out of all first overall picks in their rookie years, spanning back to Joe Thornton in the 90s. Now, I know Joe Thornton became fantastic, but the point remains. So talk to me in the comments what you think about Alexi Lafreniere, one year removed from the 2020 NHL Entry Draft. I hope you enjoyed this video of Ash Rolls and I and I. And also, comment in the comment section below, who do you want me to do next in this series? And bye.